Good morning and welcome to Connect Church Online. We are so grateful that you've decided to join us and we pray that this service would be incredibly life-giving to you as well as anyone that you might share it with. Now, I know that this probably isn't what you think of when you think of church and that's okay. In fact, it's better than okay. We're believing and trusting God that he's going to use unconventional methods during unconventional times to reach people that we wouldn't normally reach. It's times like these that I'm reminded and thankful that the church isn't just a building or an event, it's actually a group of people. That we don't have church, we are the church. Which is why I want you to know that although we're not meeting in person at a physical location, the church is here for you. If you need help, we have an entire team of people who would love the opportunity to serve you. Just text CARE to the number on the screen and let us know what you need and how we can help. No ask is too big or too small. You name it and we will do our very best to make it happen. The first way that we want to help you is to let you know how to get the most out of this morning's service and our time together. So I wanna encourage you not just to consume what you're watching, but to actually participate alongside others. So go ahead and tag your friends, hit the like button if there's something you like, and let us know uh, what you think of the message in the comments below. Attached to this video, we've also included a couple links to hand-picked worship songs that we think you'll really enjoy and that complement the message. So consider dedicating a few minutes following the service to enjoying these songs in the presence of God. Now grab a coffee or a snack and gather around as Pastor Dan kicks off a brand new series called What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. Well, good morning and welcome to another online service here at Connect Church. My name is Dan. I'm one of the pastors and I'm very glad that you're tuning in this morning. I trust and pray that you're feeling well physically, emotionally, and even after our time together, you'll be feeling well spiritually also. I want to kick off our time together by asking you a question. Do you have any idea what the most commonly repeated statement in the entire Bible is? Do you know what the Bible says more often than anything else in its pages? The thing the Bible says most has nothing to do with faith or prayer or God or money or anything like that. The thing the Bible commands us more than any other is this, do not be afraid. It's true. That is the number one command that's given to us in the scripture. In fact, it's been pointed out that do not be afraid is said 365 times in the Bible, exactly the number of days as there are in a year, except for leap year, you know, leap day, you can freak out a little bit, okay? But do not be afraid is one of the, the most commonly repeated statements in the Bible. Now, why is that? I was surprised the first time someone pointed it out to me. I kept wondering, why would God say so often, do not be afraid? Over the years, I've come to realize that the reason God so often says do not be afraid is because we live in a world in which there are so many things to be afraid of, don't we? When you're a kid, you're afraid of the dark. When you're in university, you're afraid you won't find a job when you graduate. You know, secretly, I'm afraid that my dog loves my wife more than me. We've all got fears, and fears don't make us bad people. They don't make us weak Christians. In fact, fears are a natural response to things that happen in life that we're not expecting. And we've got a whole bunch of new fears today, don't we? In the space of a few short weeks, our economy, our health, life as we know it, has been threatened by the COVID outbreak. And so we're all facing brand new threats and brand new fears. And I think it's totally normal if you're feeling a bit anxious today over things and where they're headed. But can I give you some good news? Even if we feel afraid, we don't have to live in fear. We're kicking off a new series this morning. The title's here on the screen. It's called, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. I love this because I think all of us are in this position right now. We don't really even know what we're supposed to do moving forward. We've all got questions like, man, when is this outbreak gonna end? And how bad is it gonna get? And am I gonna keep my job? What about my kids? How am I gonna keep them entertained and alive for the next three months in my house? You might wonder if you have the virus or if you're gonna catch the virus. You might even be thinking like, 
you know, what, what is this going to do to my relationship with God? We've all got questions and anxieties about things that are going on. And the truth is, I don't have answers for your specifics any more than you do. But what I can give you is a little bit of encouragement from the Bible so that you can know what to do when you don't know what to do. In order to uh, help you to understand what to do when you don't know what to do, I want to point you towards a story in the Scripture. This comes from Mark chapter number 5, and this is an interaction between Jesus and a man named Jairus. Jairus comes to Jesus, and his life is falling apart. He's in a very desperate set of circumstances, and he comes bringing a lot of fears to Jesus. But the words that Jesus says to him and the things that Jesus does for him, I believe can give you a great deal of encouragement with whatever worry and fear you're carrying around today. So let's read the passage here. It's Mark chapter number 5. We're going to start reading in verse number 22. So the scripture says, Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him, My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so that she can live. Jairus has a daughter, we'll find out in a moment, she's 12 years old. She's very, very sick. In fact, sick to the point of death. If you're a parent, you can understand how desperate he must have felt, how many fears he must have been carrying. I mean, his world is shattering all around him. And in a, in a circumstance in which he's completely out of control, he has nothing that he can do to make this any better, he comes to Jesus and says, if there's anything you can do to help me, I'm asking you, please save my daughter. Now we go on and read here in verse 24 that Jesus went with him, went back to Jairus' house, and all the people followed, crowding around him. We jump down to verse 35, but the Bible tells us just then messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, and they told him, your daughter has died. There's no use troubling the teacher now. Poor Jairus, his situation goes from bad to much, much worse. His fears go from probably a six or a seven all the way to a 10 or an 11. I mean, he is just broken and things are really spiraling out of control for him. But I want you to notice what Jesus' response is to Jairus in verse number 36. But Jesus overheard this message that was delivered. And he said to Jairus, don't be afraid, instead have faith. Jairus is in a circumstance in which he's experiencing nothing but fear. Life is out of his control. He doesn't know what to do. And Jesus calls him to set aside his fear and instead to live in faith. Jesus calls him not to give in to a spirit of fear, but instead to choose a spirit of faith. Can I tell you something? Fear is what we feel when we realize we are not in control. That's all fear is. It's the realization that you and I really are not in control of anything. And on the other hand, faith is what we feel when we recognize that God is always in control. Fear is what we feel when we realize that we are not in control. Faith is what we feel when we recognize that God is always in control. You know, Jairus is feeling a great deal of fear because he can't control the situation he finds himself in. And I think a lot of people in our world today are experiencing a great deal of fear because they are recognizing now that they're not in control. Till this viral outbreak happened, we could kind of operate under the illusion that we were in control of things, that we were the masters of our own destiny and we could make plans for the future. And as long as we worked hard and we did the right things, there would be nothing that could change that. But you know, this viral outbreak has proven to us that we're not actually in control of anything. And so the emotion or the response that we experience is fear because suddenly our eyes are opened to the, to the reality of our situation. Now, I don't know what specific fears you're carrying around today. Maybe you're afraid for your health. Maybe you're afraid for your kids or the economy or your relationship with God. Can I challenge you to recognize that those things are no more or no less under your control than they were a month ago? 
You are no more or no less in control than you were just a few weeks ago because we have never been in control. The reality is God in heaven is the one who's sovereign. He is the one who has always been in charge of what's happening. And for a long time, we've been able to operate under the illusion that we were in control of things, but now we're forced to recognize that we're not. But the good news is God is. Fear is what we experience when we realize we're not in control. Faith is what we recognize or what we feel rather when we recognize that God is in control. So let me challenge you to do what Jairus did. That is that when your life feels like it's completely out of control and you don't have any idea what to do, the best thing you can do is to turn to Jesus. When life is out of your control, turn to the one who is always in control. So Jairus goes to Jesus. Jesus tells him, listen, the answer to your fears is faith. In verse number 37, the story goes on. Jesus stopped the crowd and he wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John. These are three of his apostles. And the Bible says when he came to the home of the synagogue leader Jairus, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and he asked, why is all this commotion and weeping happening? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because of what he said. He made all of them leave and he took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was laying. Holding her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And the girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and amazed. Yeah, I bet they were. They had just experienced an incredible miracle. You see, Jesus called Jairus to answer his fears with faith. And Jairus came to realize something that you and I should take to heart, that faith can accomplish things in our life that fear cannot. If we give in to a spirit of fear, we will be frozen in place. We will believe that the, the world is crashing down around us and that we have no hope at all. But if we can respond in faith, like Jesus says we should, then we can see God do wonderful, incredible, miraculous things even in the middle of difficult circumstances. Now, all of our world today is dealing with this faith versus fear dichotomy, aren't they? Everybody is having to choose whether or not they will respond in fear or in faith. You might be wondering, well, Dan, how do I know if I'm responding in fear or if I'm responding in faith? Well, I can help you to figure it out by looking to science. You see, scientists tell us that if we find ourselves in a scary situation, if fear strikes us for some reason, then our minds and our bodies will respond in one of three ways. We will either respond with fight, flight, or freeze. Perhaps you remember hearing those in school or on the Discovery Channel. When our adrenaline response kicks in, we are tempted to either fight, to flight, or to freeze. And look, in various situations, fight, flight, or freeze can be the appropriate response. If you're out for a hike in the mountains and a bear appears on the trail in front of you, the appropriate thing for you to do is to flee. You should not keep heading in the same direction. You should turn around and go a different way. If you're trying to walk across the street, and just as you step out into the road, a car appears out of nowhere, you should freeze. That'll help keep you alive. And look, if you've got friends in your life who try to trick you into eating ketchup chips, you should fight them over that. Don't put up with that. Fighting, fleeing, and even freezing can be the appropriate response in certain situations. It is not sinful to be afraid, but it is sinful to live in a spirit of fear. And I think too many people in our world today have given in to this spirit of fear. The evidence is all over social media. We've seen people who are getting into fist fights at the grocery store over supplies. We've seen people who have said, you know what, I'm supposed to be in self-isolation, but I don't really care. You can't take away my freedom. I'm going to go do what I want to do. And we've seen people who have just melted into a puddle of emotions and fear and anxiety over what's going on. They just believe that worst case scenarios are happening. I mean, have you been in our, our community's Facebook groups lately? There are people that clearly believe this is the opening scenes to the walking dead. It's not. 
All of that is a fear response. And I think God is calling us to a faith response. Now you might be saying, well, Dan, I, I'm, that's not me. I'm not responding that way. And you're probably right. You're not getting into fist fights at the grocery store over the last roll of toilet paper. But can I tell you that this fight response, this temptation to respond in fear by fighting against other people, this can show up in more subtle ways in your life. If you go to the grocery store, for instance, and when you get there, you think to yourself, oh my goodness, I don't know how bad this is going to get or how long it's going to last. So I need to buy everything. You just panic buy everything on the shelf and you're hoarding supplies at home that you're never going to use. Do you know what you're really saying? You're saying we're in a fight for survival and it's me and my family against everyone else and you know I wish the best for you guys I really do but when you get right down to it I'm gonna take care of my people even if it's at everyone else's expense that's a fear response and if you're a follower of Jesus you do not have to respond in that way you can instead choose to respond in faith if you respond in faith, you'd go to the grocery store and you would say, you know what, we live in a pretty scary time and I do need to make sure that my family has their basic needs met and we have enough supplies to get through a couple of weeks in quarantine if we have to. But you'll remember that Jesus told you to love your neighbor as yourself. And so rather than buying up all those supplies and keeping them just for you, you'll choose to take only what you need and leave the rest for your neighbors so that they can meet their family's needs and stay healthy. That's a faith response. And I think it's what God is calling us to right now. Another way this fight temptation might show up in your life is like if you are feeling very, very stressed out because you're on lockdown, your nerves are getting frayed, you're getting short tempered, and you find yourself lashing out with harsh words, either at your spouse or your kids or the cat, I don't know. But if that's the response that seems to be bubbling up out of you, can I challenge you to consider that perhaps you have given into a spirit of fear and you are finding yourselves fighting against the situation instead of responding in faith to what God might be doing. And maybe you're not trying to flee to the mountains to live in a bunker, right? You're like, okay, I'll be here, I'll, I'll be in my home, I'm not gonna run away and potentially spread the virus around. But you know what? You might try to flee in more subtle ways. You may not be able to flee physically, but you might try to escape mentally. I was reading the other day that uh, the government in Canada and in the U.S., or at least parts of Canada and the U.S., is now allowing marijuana and alcohol delivery to your home while you're in quarantine. Okay, there are going to be a lot of people that try to escape the reality that they find themselves in. They're going to drown their fears in a bottle, or there are going to be other people that just plop down on the couch and they hit play on Netflix, and they're just going to try to veg out until this whole thing is gone. Can I say to you, that's a fear response. And there's nothing wrong with treating yourself a little bit. There is nothing wrong with, you know, healthy diversions and things like that. But you don't have to escape reality in order to cope with reality. You can actually face the situation and circumstances we find ourselves in. You can look at full on and you can say, you know what? I'm going to get through this. Things are going to be okay because I know who's really in control. That would be the faith response that you should be exhibiting. And look, maybe you have not just, you know, dissolved into a ball of emotions. You're not freaking out totally in your mind, but it is possible, and I think many people at this point are saying, you know what, we should just hit pause on everything, including my life. And so I'm gonna take my family, we're gonna hunker down in the basement for the next few weeks or the few months, and we'll see how all of this shakes out in the end. But until then, we are just gonna freeze in place and we'll see how everything shakes out. Can I challenge you not to hit pause on your life during this time? Can I encourage you to recognize that you can make a difference even from your basement? You really can. You can do something that matters in our world. You can even do things that will matter eternally if you make good use of the time that you've been given. What if you picked up the phone and you called somebody? and you just said, hey, how are you doing? You were on my mind and I wanted you to know somebody is thinking about you. What a difference that would make if we were all receiving phone calls from people like that. 
What if you chose to take this extra time that you have and to pray for those who are in need? There are so many people in our world that have deep, real needs right now, and prayer has the power to change it. And so if we were to intercede on their behalf, then we really could see miracles happening in the world around us. Perhaps you should teach your kids a Bible story every day. Now, I know that might mean you have to learn Bible stories, but that wouldn't be a bad thing either, would it? You can actually use the time that you have instead of simply passing or even wasting the time that you have. As followers of Jesus, we will not fight. We will not flee. We will not freeze. Instead, we are going to respond with love. We are going to respond with compassion. And we are going to respond in confidence that God is present with us and He is for us. Because in the end, fear operates under the belief that life is out of control. That is really the driving force behind fear in our lives. But if we have faith deep down in our soul, we will believe that in all circumstances and situations, God is in control. And that would change how you approach the next several days, several weeks, and several months. If you believe deep down in your bones that you have a good father who is working out a plan that we may not understand right now, but we can trust, that will change the way you approach your uh, response to the COVID outbreak, to quarantine, how you treat the other people in, in your life. I mean, it will drastically alter the things that happen. So if you ask me, Dan, how should I respond when I don't know how to respond? What should I do when I don't know what to do? I would encourage you to feed your faith and not your fears. Oh my gosh, I can't even. That was straight fire from Pastor Dan. So good. We so need that word right now. Yes. Oh man, thanks for joining us for our table talk, which is yes. what we're calling it. Uh, join us on social media on Facebook or comment on YouTube because we want to hear your voice as That's well. That's right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So speaking of fate, flight, or freeze, what's your guys' typical ammo? I know I have one. I'm a runner. Yeah. Are you? I am. I'm like how do you like, so you flee? I'm an ostrich, basically. Okay. I see stress, fear, anxiety. I run and then I stick my head in the sand and I wait for it to blow over. That's my stuff. What's your stuff? Fight. Oh, see, I I'm think we're all different. Are we? Because yeah, because surprised. I'm freeze. I'm like, uh, and then I flee. I'm like, yeah. yeah so you're like a. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm fight, but I do remember one time my dog, we were at the park and um, like this big bulldog came up to my little chihuahua and I just froze and I didn't know what to do. And mm -hmm. like, That's okay, surprising. you guys, this sounds so crazy, but I like start, I picked up my dog with his leash, like his collar, <laughs> but he had like, it went around his body. Okay. okay. So it wasn't just his neck. He wasn't like, <laughs> but, but like I couldn't get him into my arms fast enough. So I started like swinging yes. him around. And <laughs> Because I was frozen. I didn't know what to do. And so then I just held him. Finally, I got him into my arms and I just froze. I didn't yell at the dog. I didn't do it. So maybe I'm a freeze. But I really, but maybe I want to be a fight. But I'm also, a freeze. I don't know. Your poor dog was probably more afraid of you than the other. Yeah, he was like, what's happening right now? I don't even know. I know. Poor, poor guy. puppy. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, so from the sermon, back to that, mm -hmm. I just, I really love, <laughs> yeah, I really love that we're, we're talking about living in fear because I think mm -hmm. that that's where we've been sitting yeah. for, mm -hmm. for so many households right now, living in fear. So what does living in fear look like in our current state? Like, what are we seeing out there? What is living in fear day to day sure. in this environment, in our world? What is that? Yeah. Um, I think Dan talked about it in his sermon quite a bit, like going out and hoarding things and like not thinking of others yeah. and just being like so self-focused. Yeah. And it's just, it's terrible. Like we're in this fear of like, we're not going to get through this and we don't know what to do. So we're 
like just acting crazy. Right. But like that is not the answer. Right. Yeah. Not at all. Exactly. I find that fear makes us very selfish. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, all we can do is focus on our own problems and what we're going through. Mm -hmm. And so we stop reaching out to other yeah. people and we mm -hmm. stop engaging with our world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really easy to fall into that trap of fear. Like I caught myself even going into it. I went grocery shopping and I had this full intention of just getting exactly what I needed. Yep. And I had my little basket. And as I go through the aisles looking for what I can get, by the end, by the last row, I had gone full panic mode. I was yeah. fine yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. And when I got to the end, I was like full panic, like everything in my freezer. Like a train, chugger, and chugger, 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 chugger. You guys, yeah. and I'm like full pulling bonnet, out. Yeah. And and then I see someone from our Connect team. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like embarrassed. Shout out, Susan, <laughs> if you're watching. But <laughs> she like she has her little basket and she's just getting what she needs. And I'm like hoarding all of my oh, stuff. No. And I don't you like You have all the toilet paper. No, it, there was no toilet paper but like I can see how it can easily happen yeah. and the crazy thing is like even in the worst case scenario like in Wuhan where it's just super crazy right now and they're on really strict conditions mm -hmm. they can still go grocery shopping right. you guys yeah. groceries hasn't been closed down to us yeah. groceries are not shutting down at all and yet that's where the fear I think is coming out and mm -hmm. a lot of us mm -hmm. naturally I mm -hmm. my freezer stocked but no more yeah. like no more fear I think that's like a big thing because it's it's something that people can do. Right. Like they can go out and panic shop. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Like what what else are you in control of? Yeah. Yeah, that's a and really that's, good point. That's exactly it. It's that that's um that's how they feel like they can control what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so when we realize that we've never had control to begin with, right? mm -hmm. that God's the one in control, then we can let those things go and just give yes. it over to him. Yes. Absolutely. So good. So what about the faith angle? Like, I love the line, um, faith is what we feel when we recognize God is in control. Mm -hmm. um, so what are acts of faith that we could really lean into instead of focusing on the fear? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, doing things practical, like reading your Bible yes. mm -hmm. and uh, immersing yourself in worship. Yes, um, that's so good. And praying. I find that when I feel the need to become an ostrich and run or hide my head in the sand. Mm -hmm. Worship is something that really just speaks to my spirit, especially yeah. when my mind is going crazy. Mm -hmm. yes. And so just immersing myself in worship is a great way for me Absolutely. to build my faith without even having to try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But everyone's different. Like worship is my jam. I'm yeah. a worshiper through and through. Yeah. But mm -hmm. maybe for you, it might be reading a book or... Mm -hmm. Um, just having some quiet time meditating mm -hmm. and, uh, or um, or praying. You know? Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah, absolutely. Not neglecting yourself, mm -hmm. like what feeds your soul. So maybe that's a book. Maybe it's like having just a peaceful moment, like in the bathtub, like wherever yeah. that is, mm -hmm. like find the time to do it and don't just go into panic mode and, and all the fear is just thrown on top of your family. Totally. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's a miserable state to live in. Absolutely. I think another way that you can build your faith, too, is by speaking life. It's really important to do mm -hmm. that because right now, <clears throat> our world, there's so much negative in our social media, um, and everyone has a lot to say about fear and anxiety and what can go wrong, and I feel like it's important for us to speak life into each other yes. and also to ourselves because we can yeah. often get into that mindset of, um, the negative and what could go wrong and what we don't have and it's mm -hmm. really important to remind yourself to be thankful and grateful yes. for the things that you do have mm -hmm. absolutely um, and to just speak life so as soon as you start finding yourself going down that that tunnel of of negativity mm -hmm. you stop yourself and you yeah. go no this yeah. is not the way I'm going to live my life that's right and then that's when you include all the other elements of like reading your bible and right. praying and right. filling that space instead with something that's life-giving yeah from God absolutely yeah. and I think it's also like being the hands and feet of Jesus no matter what because I think that helps us conquer the fear totally. like even in spite of being afraid right now I'm still gonna go and do and help and be right. the hands and feet of Jesus yeah. and there's opportunities all around right now 
yes, we need to like make sure that we're staying indoors, but even if it's virtual, even if it's just calling somebody and checking on them, whatever it is, sure. like being the hands and feet of Jesus and meeting needs when it's possible. Agreed. Yeah. Um, something else I was just thinking about, like when we are out grocery shopping, mm-hmm. you know, and we see things and we're, our instinct is to like, we need to stock up on all these things, but like think about those maybe your neighbors are isolated right now. Grab a few extra things, leave them on their doorstep. Um, Financial giving, like we're still running our ministry. We still need finances. So continue to donate what you have, like pray and ask God what, what, in what way can you live faithfully? Like he is going to provide for us. In what way can you live that out? Right, exactly. I mean, the church can only meet needs as far as the people are giving to help meet the needs. So that's such a good point. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also love the point that Daniel made about the government might tell you to shelter in place, but they can never tell you to shelter in spirit. So I mean, that, that was just so good. So good. Yes. And I think that um, so many of us are doing that in fear. We're just like, just staying in our fear bubble. Mm-hmm. That's right. where we're living. And we need to break out of that. Yeah. And, and it should be the opposite, putting our faith in spirit um, at front, not putting our spirit in, on hold, not putting our faith on hold right. for the moment. I'm just going to no. wait it over. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to hunker down. No, this time is the time. To rise yes. up. Yeah. This is the time that we should be growing in our faith. I truly believe that God is doing something miraculous yeah. right here, right now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like through this, like he is turning corners, getting people's attention. Yeah. Uh, man, just in every angle. And I just can't wait to see what God does through this. Absolutely. And and we should be attentive to that. We should be like very in tune with what God is trying to do, what the Holy Spirit is leading. Yeah. And we can't do that if we're just like shutting down. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just gonna stay in my bubble until this all passes exactly. over. Netflix yeah. only. That's no. it. Like that's so <laughs> dangerous, you guys. It's so like, dangerous. Yeah. But it's it's a real threat right now for yeah. most people to want to just hide away from the world and get yeah. lost in right you know, social media or lost in watching movies Mm -hmm. and things like that. It's a real temptation right now. So we want to encourage you guys Mm -hmm. not to let yourself get lost in those things. It's time right now for your spirit to step forward. Yeah. So good. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Uh, We're going to hear from Kyle in just Mm -hmm. a moment, but um, man, lean in to what Mm -hmm. you have heard today. Um, speak life into other people around you because God is doing something amazing. Yes, he is. Thank you so much for participating in our online service this morning. I hope that you not only enjoyed it, but that it resonated with you and that this is the beginning of something new. If you've made a decision to start or restart a relationship with Jesus, your next step is to tell someone about it. And here at Connect, we make that really easy. Just text FAITH to the number on the screen and let us know. Or if you don't have a Bible and you'd like a free Bible, we will literally drive one to your house. You've just got to let us know. Again, text FAITH to the number on the screen and we will make that happen. Like I mentioned before, our team is here to serve you. In fact, Amber and Darcel are here behind me putting together care baskets for members of our church family and for our neighbors. If you are in quarantine or you need assistance, simply text CARE to the number on the screen and we will help you in any way that we can. Again, that's CARE to 587-600-2055. And not only do we serve God with our time, but we also serve God with our resources. So if this is your first time with Connect, please, this service is our free gift to you. But if you call Connect Church home or you want to partner with us as we serve those within our church and our community, we ask that you prayerfully consider making a difference by giving. Again, we make that super easy. Just text GIVE to the number on the screen. I also want to remind you to participate in the worship component of this morning's service by following the links attached to this video. This week, Simone has handpicked a couple songs for you to enjoy, sing along to, and praise God with. Parents, stick around for a minute as Darcel is going to provide you with some content and resources for you to share with your kids and for you to enjoy as a family. Thank you once again for joining us. We'll be back here again next Sunday at 10 a.m. Until then, have a great week and live life overflowing. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again. I We survived the first week of the kiddos home, and I think that deserves a shoulder shake. Only this time, who's going to join me? So let's shoulder shake all the stresses of this week that we had. Just get it off. All right. All right. 
I hope you're doing good. I hope you guys are staying healthy. Uh, I would love to hear how your week was, what went well for you in this unexpected homeschooling stretch, uh, what struggles you faced. Um, message me on Facebook or comment here. I personally have really enjoyed having the kids home. Uh, we've really bonded. Uh, we've made a schedule of what the day will look like, what kind of things we're doing each week, each day for school. But my favorite part has been scheduling out a time for Bible time uh, to really grow in faith, just one-on-one -on -one with my kids, one-on-one uh, -on -one with myself. Um, I've really enjoyed having that extra time to just grow deeper in faith. And I also wanted to share with you guys uh, something that I heard recently um, in a conference on Facebook from Paul David Tripp. He said, God makes his invisible grace visible by sending parents of grace to give it to his children who need it. Um, I know that's a lot of grace in one sentence, uh, but I'm sure some of you, like me, uh, were faced with some challenging times this week. Um, I suddenly went from being teacher and mom, and I know I was presented with some attitude that I know he wouldn't give his teachers. So um, we are God's first responders. He, they're not an inconvenience. They're never a hassle. God loves that child, and he put them in a family of faith, and he will reveal the need of that child uh, to you so that you can show them his rescuing and transforming grace. And I've included that link here um, of the conference I watched, and I highly recommend you just give it a listen. It's full of great tips to get us through this, this new found homeschooling stretch that we've been in to just really give our kids that extra grace, that extra love um, that they could really be using. As much as it's confusing for us, it's just as confusing for them. And so they really need us to kind of be the leaders in this moment. And with that being said, I want to pray for you guys. I want to pray for the week. I want to pray for our struggles. And so if you could join me, that'd be awesome. Dear God, thank you for giving us the strength to get through this first week of school canceled, for giving us this opportunity to spend time with our children and really bond as a family. Please help us to give you our struggles and new challenges that we may face. Instead of thinking we can do this on our own, we know we can't do it alone, and we are sorry for thinking that we can. I pray for those of us who are in isolation or quarantine. I pray for health and patience and grace through this time of uncertainty. In Jesus' name, amen. So much like last week, uh, the, schedule, the classes will be laid out the same. Uh, but if you have a preschool age children, today's lesson is about loving one another the way Jesus loves us, which I love right now because we can't meet as community. That doesn't mean we still can't talk to each other and still love on each other. Uh, reach out to your friends, to your family, to your loved ones, FaceTime the cousins, just reach out so we can connect with one another and let each other know we're not alone and there's love all around us in many shapes and forms. If you have an older child, today's lesson is about forgiveness, which is also wonderful in this time. Our emotions right, might run high, our thoughts might get away from us, and we just, we all need that forgiveness. We all make mistakes. But when we do, we know Jesus is there to forgive us, and it's important for us to forgive others as well. I hope today's lessons um, help you guys through your week, might give you some encouragement. Uh, I'm here for you. If you need anything, please reach out to me, and I would be glad to do my best to connect with you and, and get you the resources you need. I hope you have a wonderful day and live life overflowing. Mm -hmm.